I'm Scott Allen Miller, and this is my daily life living in Latin America. Today, I've had a number of questions over the years about can people come work for me and my company here in Nicaragua when they're moving abroad from the United States or Canada. And while we would love to employ all of you, there are many reasons why I think there's a misunderstanding as to how employment and relocation works. So there's some important context about how you are seen as an employee and where you are based, depending on where you are living and where you are from when doing relocation. So I want to go into a little bit of that context today, and I think this will make it a lot more clear as to how you can look for employment. Because if you don't understand this context, you will naturally be looking for employment in the wrong places. And if you're like love, if you're looking in the wrong places for employment, you're never going to find what you're looking for. So we want to give you that power to help you find the right thing. And it is a bright and glorious glorious morning here in Nicaragua as I'm doing this. It is just absolutely fantastic out here, and we had a wonderful grand opening, a re-grand opening of Desperados out at the beach last night. I didn't stay too late, and I'm feeling pretty good even having been debrided again this morning. So I'll see all of you right after the bump. And before everyone jumps to the conclusion that I'm on a lot of painkillers, I'm actually not on any. I did have a small amount of lidocaine sprayed on my leg before being debrided this morning. That is it, nothing internal. I am on a lot of antibiotics and uh, some um, anti-inflammatories, uh, but that's that's all I'm on. And I have uh, only had five bites of food in the last four days, but I'm feeling great. So uh, it's, just, it's just a beautiful morning. And my dogs are having such a good time. Their squirrel friend, who has been their friend for two years is uh, having, he's been just really active the last couple days and he's constantly jumping between the trees and taunting the dogs and they just go crazy. So this is them actually playing with him as they do every morning. And uh, when I come out to do the videos, they get so excited. Okay, so you're an American, you're Canadian, you're able to work in the United States or Canada. You're, you know, it could be anything. You're working at McDonald's, you're working as an engineer in, in SpaceX, you are uh, building cars, whatever it is you're doing in the United States or Canada, you're interested in becoming an expat and moving abroad. Totally understand. That's probably why you're on this channel. A lot of you are here for that reason. And you're wondering how you can move to working abroad. Well, of course, we talk about you need to get a work from home job. OK, that part you get because you can't keep going into the office or whatever in the United States or Canada. And uh, so we know we're going to be overcoming this particular problem by moving to work from home. So you need to find a company that is able to hire you to work from home. So one of the things that's not changing when you move, and everyone gets confused about this, where you are moving is irrelevant. That you are moving is irrelevant. The thing that you have to do is switch to working from home. What's really important that's absolutely critical in this concept of moving to work from home is you never ever are changing your work jurisdictions. This is where people get lost and confused. They're sure they're going to change their work jurisdictions. And that is the one thing that you have to know will never change. So as soon as you start thinking, well, I'm going to move to, nope, stop. It doesn't matter that you're going to move or where you're going to move. Take that out of your consideration. If anything you're thinking of is based on where you're planning to move or that you're planning to move at all, you've gotten confused. So for example, if you start looking at employers in Nicaragua and say, well, I'm gonna to move to Nicaragua. So, so first of all, you should say, I just said I'm gonna to move to Nicaragua. I'm already going down a bad path. But then you pick an employer based on the fact that you're going to Nicaragua. No matter what you come up with at that point, it's going to fail for you because you're not keeping your jurisdictions the same. If you're, let's just say an American, but substitute Canadian, if that's where you're coming from, and you work for an American company, you work in America for an American company, you need to switch to working anywhere in America for an American company, working from home, so you don't have to go into the office. Your jurisdiction of working in America, being paid in America, being an American worker, those things will not change. And you need an employer who simply is going to allow you to vacation, keep working while you're on vacation, work from home, whatever it is you want to do, that flexibility is on your side after you are, your employer exists, after they pay you, after you are employed. All those things are, are beforehand to your employer today. Let's take a concrete example. You work at McDonald's, you work in the accounting office, not as a cashier, and uh, you're working at McDonald's, an American company, you're an American, you're in Des Moines, Iowa, 
at the at the worldwide no idea where McDonald's does accounting in their worldwide accounting headquarters. And McDonald's says, OK, you, you know, there's no need. We have these great computer things. You can work from home now. Great. So you're 100 percent work from home. So now you're working five minutes away from the McDonald's offices, but you never need to go in. You're still an Iowan. You're still an American. You're still working for the same company. Now, in this case, you're not changing companies, but imagine it was a new company. That would be applicable as well. You are still doing an American job. You're still being paid at your American bank. Imagine it's Wells Fargo. I see that they are probably who would, it just, their name makes me feel like they'd be who you'd get paid at in, in Iowa. And uh, because, you know, that's where the Wells Fargo wagon used to bring the, the treats to the people in, in um, the Music Man. And uh, <laughs> that was, you know, that was Iowa. And um, the, the, the whole experience, nothing has changed. Your jurisdiction has not changed. You're simply a work-from-home worker, still an American. Absolutely no change of jurisdiction. And this is where I don't understand where people are getting lost, because this is a very simple process that people do every day. Now, also, people do the other direction. They've been working from home, and they go back to the office. But during COVID, nearly everyone became a work-from-home worker. Now, you weren't able to leave the country because no one was letting you in, but that is a different thing. If during COVID, you had the ability to get on a plane and go somewhere, you could have all those people who were suddenly working from home could have gone anywhere in the world, basically, had those places been open to them and had people been thinking about travel during that time. People mostly weren't. They needed to sit at home during COVID and realize how stark raving mad they were going. And then they're like, I got to get out. I got to start looking at moving. And then this thing, these things really came up en masse. Of course, some people did move. But during that time, you remained, all these jurisdictions didn't change. Okay. So now you've done this. You have a work from home job. Now you can go anywhere in the world. Now, of course, we know the complications. Maybe your employer is going to try to detect where you are. Maybe they make you come into the office once in a while. Maybe they supply your equipment so it's really hard for them to deal with while you're far away. Maybe they don't let you work if you're outside the United States and they, they like you're not allowed to work while on vacation. There's all kinds of little nuances that don't apply to most people, but they do apply to some. And many times there's workarounds to them and you just have to be creative and thinking clearly about your jurisdictions and what people need to know. And we have lots of videos covering all these aspects uh, are out there. We have a channel on employment, a playlist on employment. So make sure you watch those because we dig into these concepts constantly because I realize that if you've never been an employer and you're not thinking about your, your employer's jurisdiction, your jurisdiction, your bank's jurisdiction, you can get wildly confused when you start taking assumptions. There are things that happen when people move that they tend to fill their world with false assumptions. And some of them include the idea that you need to switch where your banking is to your new country. Some of them believe that where you take a long-term vacation becomes your home legally or your residence. And these things are not true. They're just things that people heft onto life and create these complications that don't exist at all. In reality, most expatting is incredibly straightforward and simple, but we imagine that it isn't. We imagine that going to a new country is a very difficult and complicated thing when it really rarely is. And so it's very important to dig into these things and understand that we're, we're generally creating our own problems. Now, of course, there's some simplicity. And another one is the assumption that we have to find a job in the place we move to rather than where we're moving from, which is completely wrong in almost all cases. There's times where you can do that, but there's they're not the norm, and they're almost never applicable to people who are leaving for the reasons that the people on my channel are looking at leaving. Okay, so you have this job. Now that you have the freedom to work from home, what you're going to do is take a vacation. You're going to take a vacation to Nicaragua. You're going to take a vacation to Mexico. You're going to take a vacation to Cambodia, right? Some awesome place that you want to spend a lot of time. You can call it living to your friends, to your family, to yourself. That's fine. Right? You can pack up your dogs, pack up your luggage, you can pack up your, your furnishings, your, your memories. You can move it all to that new place. Don't do that on your first day. That's foolish. But be prepared. Take all of your stuff to this place that you want to vacation in indefinitely. And whether you're going to vacation in Nicaragua for two weeks or the rest of your life doesn't change the fact that you're an American working with an American company, an American job, getting paid in an American bank, and vacationing indefinitely in Nicaragua. That is... The only way you can think about this without creating intense problems. And that is the legal sense of what you are doing.
Everyone who wants to screw you over, everyone who's trying to take advantage of you, everyone who's trying to sell you a service is going to try to break this mental model. And they're going to try to convince you that becoming a resident somewhere is this complicated thing that impacts your residency somewhere else. Totally false. Absolutely abjectly false. They're going to try to inject concepts of getting citizenship, something you may want to consider as a more complex thing in the future, and that's absolutely fine. But that is an additional thing that is above and beyond, that is not within this context, and still probably doesn't create any complications. But it might, things you may want to consider someday when you really know what's going on, but that's an additional thing. People are going to want to sell you tax services and all kinds of things because they're going to try to create, you'll see people on my channel trying to inject concepts and now there are jurisdictions you need to be aware of how they work. Nicaragua is not one of them. That's specifically why Nicaragua is such a good choice for people doing this. You are what's called a digital nomad in this situation. Even, I mean, technically you're kind of not a nomad if you only come to one place and stay, but you are under the, the regime of digital nomadry and there's no double taxation in Nicaragua for that as long as you're being paid the like I said, keep your jurisdiction in the United States and you're all set. There's no double taxation. There's absolutely none. Anyone who suggests that, get away from them. They are, they'll go to PricewaterhouseCooper and pull false information. They will pull laws without explanation. There's so many things that they'll try to come up with to make it look like there could be double taxation. It's completely false. And it's so obviously demonstrably false. And they'll come up with things like, yeah, but when you invest in, we're not talking about investing. This is your job. We're talking about taking a job in a second place, right? You're, you're, you're living in one place and taking the job in the, in the secondary place, the place where you're, you're a full resident. These dogs are driving me nuts. I don't know how much you guys can hear them because they've moved to a farther tree, but it's so loud and so constant barking. I'm taking some short videos today of it so you guys understand. This is my every single morning. It's one of the hardest things for doing the videos outside is because the dogs, first they get really excited when I come outside so they start barking at me and then the, the squirrel comes out and they just bark and bark and bark. It can easily be up to four hours in the morning of them barking at the squirrel. It, it's rough. Um, so this whole concept is that you have to remain employable in the United States and, and you do, right? just by moving to Nicaragua has zero impact on your ability to work in the United States. Employers may not like where you're calling from. They may not like that you can't show up in the office. Those things will impact them, but it's no different than if you were doing it from Nebraska and, and it, you couldn't get to the office in Iowa. So it's important to understand that you can't inject additional concepts. Keep it simple. Don't let people create complications for you. It is a very, very simple thing. But you do not get to change who your potential employers are. By moving to Nicaragua, by moving anywhere, your pool of potential employers does not change. So if you couldn't be hired by someone today living in the United States, you can't be hired by them by moving to Nicaragua. And this is where people get lost. So when people ask my company, because they know that we hire Nicaraguans, they say, well, I'm going to move to Nicaragua. Can you hire me? We know you're an American company. Yes, we're an American company who hires Nicaraguans and Bolivians and Mexicans and Argentinians. We do not hire Americans. That, that is one, violates our fiduciary responsibilities. So we legally can't actually do so. I know that you can get away with it. I realize that everyone will point out how every company violates fiduciary responsibility. But just because other people are unethical does not mean we're going to. So we do try to follow fiduciary responsibility, especially when it would be really, really stupid to not do it. But fiduciary responsibility is meant to keep businesses ethical. And it's a point that I point out a lot that companies would violate fiduciary responsibility. It would be corruption. It would be somebody uh, doing something really heinous to violate fiduciary responsibility in that way, in that specific case. And we're certainly never going to fall off that wagon. Um, but also it is completely unaffordable because um, the United States makes hiring Americans for companies that don't have to completely unreasonable. That's not illegal, but it is beyond thinkable. There's just, you have to understand that as an American, and it doesn't matter where you live, remember, your jurisdiction will never change for your lifetime. 
Okay, now, I mean, technically, if you decide to get Nicaraguan citizenship and give up your American citizenship sometime in the future, yes, that would change your jurisdiction. But as long as you remain an American citizen and have access to all the wealth and, and career options of America, you remain an American. And that means that companies that cannot hire Americans can never hire you. Even if you become employable in another country, they still can't hire you because America will see you as an American regardless of where you are, as long as you are an American. So you don't get to opt out of being treated as an American, which most of the time is a good thing for you, but once in a while has some negatives. This is not actually one of them. That requires another layer of misunderstanding, but we'll get to that. But as a company that does not hire Americans, that cannot, right, because an American will cost 10 Nicaraguan employees, not just because of uh, actual cost of salary, which has to be many times higher, right? An American working abroad still has to be paid minimum wage in the United States, still has to be paid minimum wage, minimum wage for their state, still has to pay income taxes in their state, sometimes in the country, still has to file, still has to have workman's comp, still has to have a whole host of very expensive things that you can't use that don't benefit you and your employer has to pay that price for. So only employers who absolutely must have American employees would logically hire American employees unless they can't find the skill sets that they need somewhere else. We have no problem finding the skill sets that we need somewhere else. In fact, we actually, it's easier to find them somewhere else. One of the reasons that companies come to us is because we're able to find the skill sets for them outside the United States that they can't find inside the United States. Much more reliable staff, lower cost, more skills, uh, show up to work more, just is what it is, right? We built our business on not working inside the United States for a very long time, right? So we can't use, we do not have the option of using American employees. That's gonna be true of everybody you find when you go, okay, so they hire in this other place, maybe I'll go talk to them. That will always be your resulting answer because they hire in that other place because they're not hiring in America. They would, you know, if they could hire in their, in the United States at the same price as somewhere else, you would already be looking at their jobs in the United States. You don't get extra eligibility by being on vacation in another place. And that's all you will ever be in another country to your employer is on vacation. That's super important. Eventually, in theory, you could work really hard and get the right to work from another country. As long as your employer then is not American, someone else could treat you as an employer in another country. But if you're an American, an American employer must always treat you as an American. So anybody who can hire you now, like you just have to keep this context clear. And it's all just don't add additional thoughts, right? Nothing you're going to do is going to change your pool of employers, not practically. You're never going to be able to take a job in Nicaragua. You're never going to be able to take a job from a Nicaraguan employer. You're never going to be able to take a job from someone that does not hire Americans already. You're never going to get access to a job because of the fact that you're moving. You have to have the access to the jobs today. You don't have to get the job today. You can switch jobs in the future. All that's fine. Your pool of potential employers does not change when you move. Your pool of potential employers is static. It is the pool you have today. It is the pool you will have tomorrow. It'll be the pool the day before you move. It'll be the pool the day after you move. It'll be the pool in 10 years, except for those that go out of business and the new ones that get created. That is static. So start by internalizing that. And that will give you your insight into how to proceed. You can start looking for your job to work from Nicaragua or anywhere else right now. Nothing is holding you back. You don't need to be in Nicaragua first. There's no reason to be in Nicaragua first. There's a load of reasons to make sure you have the job before you move. So you have the comfort of moving with a job you've already settled into. You're already getting a paycheck. You know that everything works. You know there's nothing to go wrong. You know that they filled out the paperwork. If they were going to try to have you show up in the office on the first day, you've already done that. If you need to check anything in with your bank, you've already done that. You are in great shape. You can just go on vacation. And at any moment, this is an important little piece of skill set to have. At any moment, they decide, ooh, we don't think... We don't think, uh, you know, you can be remote anymore. Well, you can hop a plane and be in the office in a day, knowing that at any moment you can show up. Yes, it's going to take you several hours, maybe a day. But in a pinch, you can be back home at a moment's notice 
for some offices, that's all they care about. Some people let the, like Josie Marr, who was on my channel recently, his business in the United States, they know that he lives in Nicaragua. They pay him as an American. They, they don't care where he lives. He works as an American and he flies into California every few weeks to go work. So he's constantly in the airport, constantly flying up and they don't care. They're like, okay, we only need you in the office a few days a month. So you show up to the office. That's your problem, right? You want to fly in from another country? Knock yourself out. And then the rest of the time, he gets to live in Nicaragua. Having that flexibility to know that you can show up at any moment and be like, yeah, sometimes I vacation a lot because I work from home, that gives you a lot of flexibility, a lot of flexibility to adjust in the future, mentally a lot of power when talking to employers, and it's an important context to remember because it's true. We're not talking about falsifying information. We're talking about not falsifying information. Now, we talked about this in the video where I did about oversharing and context with employers, but it's a really important thing. We are so caught up in the human terminology of, oh, I live in Nicaragua, like I do. But legally to the United States, I vacation indefinitely in Nicaragua. To my employer in the United States, I vacation e indefinitely in Nicaragua. I am able to work for an employer in the United States because I founded the company and they have to employ me. But that is, I'm the exception. There are no American employees that are not owners. None, right? That And there have not been for a long time. And that is part of our corporate mandate. Uh, so those things, right, because you have this vacation thing is really important because um, it, it, is, it is the reality of what you're doing. And we don't want to say that, right, when we're talking to our friends and they're like, ah, what are you doing in Nicaragua? Oh, I'm I'm on vacation. They're like, you've been there for three years. What kind of vacation is that? But that's just because they don't understand vacation because the current American context of vacation is something that can't be longer than two weeks unless you're super lucky, it can be three. It's, it's something that you do instead of work, instead of a travel that you do and keep working. Back in the old days when people were wealthy and only vacationed when you were wealthy, then they didn't stop working. They took vacations to work from somewhere else. And that's how you're really doing things when you work from home. Learning that vacation is not best taken as a break from a life you don't love, but instead being a permanent condition of a life you do love is a really important thing. And this is something I teach in my own company is that work-life balance in America is almost universally taught and sometimes enforced and in Europe is really taught and enforced that work is to be a horrible part of your life and you have to cut it off and go to the part of your life that you enjoy. Now in Europe, they're good about cutting it off much earlier and saying you get to enjoy part of life. And in America, they're like, if you get five minutes a week, enjoy it, that's your work-life balance. So that is something that Europe has healthier, but Europe has a super unhealthy concept of work in general, where it's always something you hate and you always must avoid it. Because if you're a person who can make work into something that they enjoy, then taking that away the way that Europe does ruins work-life balance for those people. And so it's a really bad thing. It's they've, they've basically taken a problem from one extreme and tuned it to the other extreme without ever actually thinking about what they're doing, much like they did when they took away the lightning cables from iPhones and said they wanted to standardize and went to a non-standardized cable that now there's less standardization than there was before. European regulations basically always backfire and it's become a terrible place. It's one of the reasons why I don't want to live in Europe anymore is they've become so heavy handed with silly regulations that they've made life unbearable. And the very things that they claim they're going to fix are the things that they break. But it could be worse. You could be in England who brexited and actually made things worse than staying in the EU. So yeah, you can see where it's going. Anyway, so the point here is that uh, uh, by by looking to do in general, and this is just general life advice, moving your life into a lifestyle that you love, that includes work not being something that you hate, and the environment in which you work being something that you love, and being able to intermingle work and life better together, you are going to be a happier person. For some people, like my CEO, she needs to disconnect from work most of the time. She can check in with work after hours a little bit, see how we're doing, make sure that the wheels have not fallen off the wagon, and she's fine. But in general, she needs to show up to work at roughly a certain time and leave at roughly a certain time and know when she's done that she can go party, drink, DJ, go to an artist enclave, 
do whatever she's going to do and just be totally disconnected from work. And when she returns, she's hardcore at work. Whereas others of us need to be connected all the time. We always need to be kind of involved as to what's going on. And we're never really in a position of disconnecting. And that's how we work. We're just completely different people. Both of those are different approaches to a healthy work-life balance. But what many jurisdictions do, like the EU, is they pick hers and say hers is correct and mine is wrong. The United States leans a little bit more towards me and says mine is right, hers is wrong, right? So neither is correct. It is that people need the flexibility to choose the work-life balance that is true work-life balance for them and not be tortured by being stuck into what other people uh, have the expectations of them to have or be forced to move to a different jurisdiction to find a work-life balance environment that matches them. These are really terrible things that both, both regions do. But when you're moving to a place like Nicaragua, you are given the flexibility to empower yourself to do a, a little bit better job at managing that. Of course, your employers still dictate an awful lot of that, so that can be tough no matter what. But by finding a way to, you know, if you have a desk job and you're going to be doing graphic arts, or you're going to be programming, or you're going to be taking customer service calls, or you're going to be whatever, you could be doing it in a place that is safer, that is lower cost, that you have someone cooking for you, you have food delivered, that you can afford to live better, that you have a view from the mountains, maybe you're living on the beach. You name the thing that makes your life better, and then when you're done with work, you can live this life as well. But you can also be here in paradise while you're at work. When I go to work here every day, it's so much nicer than when I went to work in my closet in Texas. That little bit of instead of a suburban backyard with my little converted garage office, which was very nice. And I worked there for a very large number of years, long years, 11 years. I used that office to one degree or another and we custom built it. It was beautiful. It really was a nice uh, uh, facility for me to work from and help build the company over a long period of time. It was very important to us and I, I do miss it from time to time, but it was in a place where as soon as I walked out the door, it was a noisy kitchen. As soon as I walked out the door, it was just in a bit of Texas that while it's a nice bit of Texas, it wasn't paradise. And now when I walk out the door, I'm in paradise and I have beautiful light and I get beautiful rain and I have a beautiful garden and I can go right down the street to the places I wanna go. Those are important parts of upgrading even my working day. And that's what you need to be looking at doing. So our takeaway, don't even entertain the thought of any employment options changing when you move. Look, remember that everything is going to stay the same. Your employers will remain from the country you come from. Your, your employment identity, you remain an American worker no matter where you go. You will be paid in an American bank no matter where you go. And I said I'd come back to this. It doesn't matter that that happens. That is not a negative. All those things are a positive because there's basically nowhere in the world who pays better than the United States. So the best bet, unless you're moving to Switzerland, Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, um, uh, Norway, maybe Sweden, maybe Denmark. I don't think so. Ireland. There's a handful. Singapore, maybe. Hong Kong, maybe. There's a couple places in the world where you could move, where local employment may match or exceed the pay in the United States. Maybe. Other than that, anywhere you move, even Germany, even Italy, even England, even Mexico, you, you name it, Canada, anywhere you're going to move, your American salary will be higher than what you would have earned in the place you're moving to. So you don't want to get employment locally in those places. You want American employment. And those are the high cost places. If you're moving to a place like Nicaragua, the difference between the highest you could possibly earn, should you be allowed to work in Nicaragua, if you were fluent in Spanish, if you were fluent in English, if you could work the highest paid, highest skilled job in Nicaragua, and what you can reasonably earn in the United States is so big of a disparity that there's no possibility that you would ever entertain looking for a Nicaraguan job if you are an American. You would never ask this question if you were thinking through what those pay scales were like. It's just unreasonable. You have access as an American to work at American rates. Never give that up. Never think about giving that up. Never let it cross your mind to consider giving that up. That is the most powerful thing you have. 
That is the lottery ticket that everybody in Nicaragua wishes they had. None of them want to live in the United States. They all want to get paid near uh, United States rates. Every Nicaraguan, except for those who are committing crimes and are fleeing, right? Obviously, there are people, always criminals that are trying to get out. Every country has a criminal who decides to go somewhere else to, to have a, a less chance of getting caught. Everybody who goes to countries like the United States from down here, they all say the same thing. And it's the only thing that makes sense. Why would they go to a place that costs more? Why would they go to a place that's more dangerous? Why do they go to a place that doesn't want them? Why would they go to a place where they're treated so badly? Why would they go to a place with bad weather? None of this makes any sense. Oh, there aren't a lot of jobs here. And even the jobs that are here do not pay nearly as well. They want more money. A lot of times they don't get more money because there's just not as much money as they think there is. But the hope the dream of there being so much more money is out there, and that pushes so many more people to move and take the chance to try to get that money. That is the thing, but that's the lottery ticket that they wish they had. That is the lottery ticket that you have. Not using your American ability to work and right to work as an American is like taking your lottery ticket and setting it on fire. And then because you've thrown away your employment lottery ticket, being forced to try to take a job away from a Nicaraguan who, because of high unemployment rates, there's always, for anyone who, and this doesn't really happen because Nicaragua does not allow people to come in and work in the country, which is why we get so angry with people like the Radpad people who started trying to convince people that they could come in and steal jobs illegally without the right to work. Every single job that is worked by a foreigner in the country is taking food out of the mouths of a Nicaraguan family who has, because there's always enough Nicaraguans who are ready and willing to work and looking for job opportunities, and all they need is a job, and they will be able to feed their families. Literally, they're trying to put food on the table in many cases, and job shortage is the number one problem. The the salary rates are not the primary problem here. Yes, that's something we'd love to improve, but first we have to solve unemployment. So that is one, something that as a person who has the ability to work somewhere else, you would never consider doing anything that would negatively impact the working uh, capabilities in Nicaragua. And I realize people just don't know that this is what they're doing. But if you are thinking that you're going to take a job that is open to a Nicaraguan, that means you are there's Every job that's open to a Nicaraguan, a Nicaraguan will do. There's never a time that there's a shortage. It's not like in the United States where it's like, well, yeah, there's jobs, but there's no one to fill them. There's always someone to fill them in Nicaragua. The issue is always a shortage of open job positions. Currently, someday that will change, but not for the foreseeable future. So anything that negatively impacts the availability of a job here would be a terrible thing. And that is why that is the number one thing that the government protects against. So they're never going to allow you to do anything such as, you know, work locally when you have the ability to work somewhere else, or even if you don't, if you don't have the ability to work here, but then they won't let you stay. But that's, that's the most important thing to really just understand. You have the lottery ticket, don't throw it away and don't throw it away accidentally thinking that you're going to do something that will end up being a negative for Nicaragua. That's not what you want. That's not what they want. And it, nobody wins. And if you use your lottery ticket and you come here with that foreign job, even if it's hard to get and it, maybe it doesn't pay as much as when you worked in the United States, you have the best of all worlds that one, you have the best income to lifestyle uh, cost disparity. That is as good as it gets. That's what makes living here so good for foreigners is that our foreign income ratio to our cost of living is so significantly wild. And then what income you do have by spending it in Nicaragua, you're making a immense positive economic impact because you're not taking a job away. And because of the money that's coming in and flowing through you and then going into rent and food and cooking and services and all those kinds of things is creating generally at least one, if not more than one additional job. So instead of accidentally taking one away, you will create jobs and they in turn pay taxes and buy things and contribute to another 0.1 job. And that person contributes to a 0 0.0001 job. And, and it just creates more and more economic uh, benefits. So that's why expats moving to the country can be so beneficial. And with the right viewpoint of, of how to think of it, the right mental space to be in, we can understand how to look for jobs, where to be looking. And if you vary, this is the important thing. If you start this path where you're like, well, I heard about these people employing in Nicaragua. I should look into them instantly. You've gone so far down a rabbit hole that you're unlikely to keep looking for real jobs that could actually apply to you. 
think about if you're just going to work from home, don't consider that you're moving to Nicaragua. Find a job that allows you to work from home and doesn't require you to go into the office. Nothing is going to change. You are an American. You work in America. You get paid in America. Your bank will not change. You will never say the words, I'm moving to Nicaragua. You can say, I like to vacation abroad. You can say, I like to travel. You can say, I like to you know, work from wherever I am. I like to constantly move. I like to move around the United States. I like to move to other countries. You never say you're relocating. That is not legally what you are doing. You never tell them where you're going to go because you have not made that final decision. No matter how much in your mind it seems final, it is not. It's just where you think at the moment you're going to go. And you just never overshare and you never change your context. You're an American doing all American thing. And no matter where you go, your bank will never change. It all stays in America. And if you have any questions about that, stop and say, wait, anything that varies from that, I'm confused about something. Watch this again. Watch my other videos. We've covered all of this. Never are those things going to change. It just doesn't make sense. I know that everyone hoists these ideas on you. Everyone pressures you into thinking it's bigger and harder and heavier than it is. It is not. It is the simplest possible set of circumstances, and it was the best set of circumstances. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. Link is up above. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.